Ladies and gentlemen, I think I have found the worst video game website on the internet. And I do not say this lightly, because there are a lot of terrible video game websites on the internet. Uh, TheGamer.com with Editor-in-Chief Kirk McCann. Now, yes, there's clearly some bad blood between Kirk and I. Uh, after I published a piece on one of their articles, which is about the Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 press event fiasco, in which I sort of criticized their take, they, their, their author Eric Schweitzer was talking about how it was very racist that they were made, made to kill Arabs, fake kill, fake Arabs, in this training simulation thing. I said, I don't think it's particularly racist, I think it's just a stupid press event, and you probably shouldn't go to stupid press events. And that's a very brief summation of what I said and what the whole thing was, but this led to Kirk getting online on Twitter and screenshotting some stuff and saying that I was embarrassing and a whole bunch of blue check marks getting online and kind of chiming in and yada, yada, yada. Um, Kirk eventually addressed me in, you know, face to face on Twitter um, and, you know, made personal attacks and, and uh, made fun of my appearance and so on and so forth. So class act this Kirk. Um, and it wasn't until today that it occurred to me that I had seen this guy's name somewhere before. And I was, I remembered that I, when I was covering the Troy Leavitt, uh, Hogwarts legacy thing where, um, with Troy was, uh, brought, brought a, was a story was created around Troy that he was some horrible person, uh, for having these YouTube videos where he critiques like Anita Sarkeesian and, uh, the last Jedi and stuff. And all these different websites from Kotaku, Polygon, I don't even remember all of them, um, wrote about, you know, how he's this far right, uh, you know, maybe even dangerous individual. And um, no one really watched his videos because I watched them. I didn't watch all of them, but I watched some of them and they're very mild mannered. He's not some far right crazy firebrand. He's just kind of a guy who doesn't agree with a lot of the, the woke games media. Um, and... So there was a lot of kind of smearing of, of Troy Leavitt and, uh, but the worst, by far the worst, was Kirk McCann's piece, which accused him of being a grifter. Uh, in this piece, he suggests that Troy orchestrated the whole thing, essentially, uh, that he's grifting everyone, that after he retires, he's going to go on YouTube and start you know, raising money on Patreon or whatever so that he can be another Ben Shapiro, basically. Or he'll crowdfund a game that's free of politics. Um, of course, when, uh, when Troy actually made his own video saying why he was retiring, it was for family reasons that had nothing to do with being cancelled. Uh, he critiqued the gaming press for not doing their due diligence, for not reaching out and finding out the true story and not even finding out what his job title was. Uh, but he didn't blame them for everything under the sun. He didn't try to raise money. He didn't try to start a, a YouTube right-wing reactionary channel. None of that. Now, here's the really important part. That article that Kirk wrote stands today with no correction and no update. Uh, the original article that The Gamer published about uh, Chris Avalon, also no update to that article, uh, which is interesting because Kirk wrote a follow-up piece today about, the, about Chris Avalon's side of the story. Um, I published one yesterday. Kirk has published one today. They're very different articles. Um, I, I have a, a written piece where I go into some more detail on this, but one thing that's interesting about the Gamers article today is they don't mention that Avalon actually called that website out, it, specifically that website and no other, for getting the, the facts so egregiously wrong in their original article. The original article said that Avalon was accused of drugging and raping countless women. Um, and while the article headline has been changed to take out uh, the raping bit, it includes, it's still pretty much identical to, to the way that uh, it originally was. It still accuses them of drugging countless women. Uh, within the article itself, it, it, it's very, it goes very, it goes beyond what any of the accusers actually accused Avalon of doing. So Avalon actually calls this website out uh, and yet Kirk fails to mention that. Also, fails to update the original article that they published. Um, and all of this is curious because I actually, I went to the gamer's website and I looked over some of their policies. Um, their fact-checking policy reads, 
We strive for 100% accurate headlines and apply a rigorous vetting process to every news article on the site. Rumors and insider reports are identified, uh, identified accordingly to ensure distinction between confirmed information and industry buzz that is of interest to our readers. Uh, the original Avalon piece says report. It doesn't make it clear that it is a, an, an unconfirmed allegation. Uh, it, it, but we'll, keep, we'll continue. Before any article is written, we ensure the information is new and accurate. We verify sources and always dig down to the original source and reference material if applicable before the writing process begins. Even if other outlets report an unsubstantiated piece of news as official confirmation, we require 100% confirmation to claim it's actually confirmation. We do not post clickbait. Our headlines might be bold, but we don't throw out broad statements just to sound bold. It has to be accurate and fact-checked. The Gamers articles don't just report the news, we provide industry-leading context that explains why that news is important to you. Mm-hmm. Well, I would just submit both the article, all the articles I'm referencing today, as evidence that this fact-checking policy is not uh, stuck to very closely by the gamer or its editor-in-chief. They have a corrections policy. Uh, as mentioned in our fact-checking policy, we aim for accuracy of info at all times, as well as transparency and corrections. If we update a post because there's an error in it, we include the wrong producer or actor in a cast list or had the wrong date, etc., we add a bolded correction in the article. This makes certain we remain accountable for our content and abiding to trusted journalism standard. We believe that with great power comes great responsibility. We aim to be accountable, accurate, and an authority. I respect my authority. In addition to corrections, we believe it is important to update content, both related and evergreen, where possible, when new info is available. When we post news or a feature, all previous stories features on that subject are updated with links to the new post so that readers always have the full picture no matter which of our articles on the subject they land on. As of right now, none of these articles have been updated. They may go back in and update those articles, but right now, they have not been updated. So uh, they might sneak around this and try to fix their mistake here, but right now, the article on the original article on Avalon, the article on Leave It, not only were they clearly not fact checked, they were not corrected. They have not been updated with links or bold or anything. Let's go to the ethics policy, shall we? Our entertainment brands do not publish personal attacks against people and companies in the industries we cover or against colleagues in our industry. I don't think that applies to Twitter, I guess, since. Uh, just look at my feed, man. <laughs> we stress objectivity in reporting topics of a sensitive nature. Um, so that's there's a lot more, but it's not really applicable. Um, we do not publish personal attacks. That's the first line of their ethics policy. And yet there's an article about Troy Leavitt accusing him of being a grifter with no substantiated evidence of this whatsoever by their editor-in-chief. I mean, man. This is what I'm talking about. Why do you think gamers despise game journalists? It's because of people like Kirk. Why, why, why have I decided to no longer refer to myself as a game journalist? Because of people like Kirk. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of shitty game journalists out there, but I think this might be like Kirk, Kirk is up there, right? He's way up there. I'd say, you know, I should have more beef with like Lee Alexander, who called me a right wing nut job and insinuated that I am a big Alex Jones fan and just tried to send her Twitter followers to harass me before deleting that tweet. Um, but you know, I still respect the fact that she wrote that really good GTA 4 defense against sexism, sexism accusations. And so I just think whatever with her, like she's clearly lost her way and become angry and bitter. And that's whatever. It happens to people, right? I mean, it can happen to the best of us. But I don't understand, like, here's a website with very clear corrections, ethics, policies, fact-checking policies, where even their editor-in-chief just throws that out of the window, like, like it's nothing. Like, it just means nothing to them. Um, and so, so here we enter, like, a couple different subjects. Um, the Avalon story, I'm going to reiterate that I don't know what the truth of that is. I think, from what I've heard from speaking with legal experts, that it's going to be a very, very tough case for Avalon to make. It's going to be tough. Um, but I, I think he has a right to defend himself. I think he has a right to, to, to present his own evidence, both to the court of law and to a court of public opinion. And I think everyone has a responsibility to take that seriously and look at what he's saying, just like we should take seriously what his accuser said 
and we should we should see what evidence is presented by everyone before we rush to judgment. Um, speaking of rushing to judgment, uh, Kirk and others, um, this their their whole modus operandi, their whole way of behaving and acting is to find dirt on people and try to smear people and try to make people look bad because they have no arguments um, because they're so vapid and and arrogant that they think that just talking shit is all you need to do. Um, so they found a tweet that I have deleted when I first saw uh, the Jackie Collins text message tweet that um, that uh, that uh, Chris Avalon had texted her some very lurid sexual stuff. And she in the, in the text exchange that was posted, she seemed offended by this. And I, I mean, it had a knee-jerk reaction when I saw this. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people? That's what I tweeted. Um, now, I, I deleted that when, when I realized that that was a very knee-jerk thing for me to, to tweet. And I, I regret that. And I think part of, like, wisdom and uh, maturity is owning when you make a mistake. Um, even if you don't do it right away, figuring out, okay, well, look, we're all human. We fuck up. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have tweeted that, but it was a knee-jerk reaction. I deleted it because I don't want to present myself that way. But I'm fine owning up to the fact that I shouldn't have done that. Um, now, Kirk and his cronies are trying to present this as like, I, I have a, I'm trying to uh, speak to a new audience, and so I have to backtrack on what... No. My audience has been the same for a decade. I've been, I've been writing pro-consumer, uh, pro-freedom of speech, you know material for a long time now since the Mass Effect 3 ending. Um, I have made mistakes during that entire period of time. I've made many mistakes. I have, I have had bad takes. I have, uh, I have fucked up. And I, I know that because like I'm human and I learn things and I, I get older and wiser. Uh, sometimes, you know, especially on Twitter, sometimes you're, what you tweet or what you, what you say can be so based on your mood that day or your feelings or, or something else going on in your life. Um, and it's pretty easy to kind of say shit. And then, then when, you know, things are always being misreported too. So you, you, you see something and you're like, holy shit, this is terrible. And then later you realize like, oh, that's actually, that actually didn't happen. Like, like I reacted to, um, the, the tear gas story when Trump was going to go make his speech and everyone reported that there were, that they, that he had the, these protesters removed forcibly so he could do this. And we find out later it had nothing to do with that. Like, okay, I, I reacted to that with, with like horror and isn't this terrible and the government shouldn't be doing this to peaceful protesters and then the story isn't even true. So I, I was wrong, but sometimes like you're wrong because you're presented with bad information and, and you can't be expected to get everything right. What you need to do, what people need to do is own up when they make a mistake. So this is me owning up. I made a mistake. Um, I, I shouldn't react even, I shouldn't, I, I want to be better about this, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes on Twitter, especially, it's just the nature of Twitter. You react, you say something, you regret it later, you own up to it. So uh, this this is just another way that, that these people are going to try to go after me and really go after me because I have the audacity to just tell Chris's side of the story um, as fairly as possible, even though I'm not saying he's innocent. I've never said that once. I'm just saying, hey, let's like treat everybody like they're innocent until we have all the, the data, all the evidence. Um, but that's not good enough because their goal is to smear and destroy people because they're a bunch of fucking bullies. Um, they're, 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 they're masking their bullying nature, their true nature behind this, this mirage of social justice and, and virtue signaling and, and, and they're using that and this is what's so disgusting about people like this because they're pretending to be virtuous. They're pretending to care about people. They're pretending to care about these women who, who, who have make these allegations, but they don't give a shit about any of that stuff. They're out to hurt people. This is the goal of someone like Kirk McCann. Clearly see it in all of his writing that he does not t care about fact-checking. He does not care about his ethics policy. He cares about hurting people. And that's what he gets his jollies on. Uh, that's, you know, and that's why he's sitting around talking shit without tagging me after blocking me. I blocked him back, by the way, for my own, my own protection, but, um, not that it does any good, but I did. Um, but you know, like these people, it's just like back in the day when, when I got attacked for posting an emulator, you know, they won't say it to your face. They talk shit behind your back. They send their followers after you. Uh, yeah, I quote to tweet people and then my followers maybe sometimes go after people, but I, I, I'm, I'm not hiding behind anything like, <laughs> I, like, go ahead. Let's fucking throw down. Like, let's do it. I mean, these people are such cowards that I guarantee you someone like Kirk wouldn't say that to my face 
in person ever. Uh, the things that he said to me because the, you know them's fighting words, bitch. Uh, so, anyways, we won't get too too much further in there. I would like to just simply point out the hypocrisy of uh, thegamer.com and its editor in chief, uh, and why we shouldn't take them seriously, and why game journalism is failing, and why game journalism is not something I really care to be associated with anymore. Uh, not, not 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 to not to um, smear all game journalists because there's many hardworking people out there writing guides. Uh, doing doing reviews, nose to the grindstone, and they don't like they don't like this bullshit political bullshit either. They don't like all the gotcha questions. They don't like the sneaky shit. Uh, n nobody likes this crap, you know. Nobody likes these journalists who try to trap developers in 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 gotcha questions and in interviews about politics in games. No one likes this these these personal attacks and these smear campaigns. I mean, this shit gets clicks. That's why it's that's why it's done, and it makes people feel powerful, feel like they have they have the ability to harm people, destroy people, and so for some reason people like that. Um, but we take the high road. I take the high road. Don't don't go after Kirk or any of these people on Twitter. Ignore them. Fucking just ignore them. Don't don't go to thegamer.com. Don't click on their links. Don't read their yellow journalism. Just it, just let them consign themselves to the dustbin of history because right now game journalism is doing a fantastic job of destroying itself. And it's helped along very, very, very nicely by, by people like this. Um, in the meantime, we'll wait to find out what happens with Avalon and his accusers. Uh, it's going to be a tough case either way, but hopefully some, some more information comes out, some more receipts some more evidence, and we can get a clearer picture. I don't think it'll change people's minds because people have a hard time admitting when they're wrong, um, assuming that he is cleared of, of wrongdoing. Um, I, I think people will still just maintain that he's a horrible person based on some tweets. Um, but I, you know, if, if I find out that he did do horrible things and the evidence points in that direction, I will happily own up that that's the case because I think that facts are important and, um, you know, all this other shit, it's just, it's bullshit. So, uh, please do like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon, which is new for me, but I'm trying to get more independence so that I can keep reporting about things like this from, uh, from my own point of view and without, without too much fear of retribution. Uh, or cancellation, and um, yeah, let's just keep keep telling it like it is, and trying to have a rational conversation around things, and just stick to stick to ob as objectively reporting things as possible, using common sense and good faith. I mean, I think good faith is in short supply. Maybe a little more good faith, maybe a little more common sense, maybe a little more human decency in the world would actually get us somewhere. Uh, instead of all this just awful, awful, awful shit. So, thanks for watching. Peace.